My after school bus drive didn't take me home. Submitted by Leo Harp. This hurts to write about. It hurts to close my eyes and reopen them because I find myself back in the nightmare of what happened. This experience I am going to tell you about happened on October 5, 2006, which makes you probably wonder why I am writing about it now. Truth be told, I am babysitting for my sister's child, who has finally come of age to start taking the bus to school. All the horrid memories came swinging back since I saw her take the bus, and due to the coronavirus, I've had limited access to my therapist. So, I am hoping maybe writing this story on different sites that I use might comfort me somehow. I don't think it will work, but me lying awake at night until 5 o'clock in the morning obviously isn't working either. If you care to hear on, well here goes my story. I was in 5th grade and going after school to my science club, basically to get away from my parents arguing back and forth each day about why the mortgage wasn't being paid and who cheated on who. That kind of shit was something my 10 year old brain couldn't handle. And so, on that day, I stayed after school. I remember having a blast and peeping over the microscope to look over to my school crush Haiti. I guess you understand the real reason why I wanted to be in this club. She was smart, pretty, and of course, the popular girl. I was the typical nerdy kid that people didn't hate or despise, but knew I wasn't on the same level of hierarchy as the cool kids. Case in point, I spent time enjoying the science club studying insects and multicellular organisms under the microscopes and goggly eyeing my crush from afar. After I took the last few notes for the club's homework, I did my best to put some big boy pants on and approach her. And as soon as I tried to do so, my best friend at the time Jason came to stop me. He pulled me by the arm with that serious but friendly smile with closed eyes and a sigh. I don't want to see you get hurt Leo. When he said those words, I felt saddened. It was like giving a box of chocolates to that special someone you like, just to have them laugh at it and crush it beneath their feet. I looked up to see Haiti kissing a stupid moron named Derek and taking off to the buses holding hands. I sighed too and patted Jason's shoulder. Thanks Jay. I needed that. He nodded and patted mine too. Guys like us Leo, we don't get the picture perfect ones. We're better off keeping our noses in our books. Besides, I don't know about you, but I'd rather wait till college when girls are hotter and more mature. He gave a gentle nudge and playfully ruffled my messy hair. He was such an ass but I loved him for it. You're such a dick. I'm shocked you even managed to get straight A's considering all you do is watch porn on YouTube instead of studying. Who needs to study when you're a genius? I laugh so hard. You do know you're a dick, right? I know, I know. Come on. We're gonna miss the bus. With that, we race to the buses laughing at each other and cracking jokes along the way. You would think that I would be more hurt about seeing my crush with somebody else. Truth be told, at the time, I knew I would have never been able to be with her. She was just out of my league, and I was a weird geeky kid with terrible social skills. I'm sure a lot of you out there have had the feeling. Still, none of that mattered. I was pretty much in fantasy land, thinking that once they broke up with each other, I would swoop in and be the Prince Charming. So, as Jason kept making fun of Hades butt and I kept mocking him for watching porn rather than trying to actually have a crush on someone, we made it to the bus with an unusual surprise. A different bus driver. Now it's not like this was completely out of the ordinary. It happens all the time. Sometimes the usual driver calls out sick or something, but it's not like I was shocked or confused. It didn't bother me much. It's just that me and Jason knew our usual bus driver well and she would always be super nice to us and let us fool around on the bus, even though we should have gotten in trouble for some of the dumb stunts we pulled. Nonetheless, Jason and I got on the bus and said hi to the male bus driver. Allow me to describe him for you because I need to for the sake of my mind. The bus driver, aside from being male, was quite tall. Tall enough that his head reached a little farther than normal above the headrest of the driver's seat. He looked middle-aged with a shaved face, thick round glasses, and a pale coat to his skin color. Not albino or anything, but as if he hadn't seen sunlight for at least a long amount of time. He had a Tampa Bay baseball cap on and a smile that was cheerfully intoxicating. I say that because most bus drivers are tired or calm with their smiles, like the smile a cashier gives you after a 7 hour shift. But his smile was, nice. Like really nice. I know that sounds weird, but I'm trying to say that it felt like a genuinely happy smile. I just remember thinking to myself that he was so nice. So, I was extra polite and said, hello sir. How are you? With the tip of his cap and that pure smile, he said, I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. He said it without being condescending and without mocking my pleasantry. 
I just thought he was nice, and I walked a few seats back behind the bus driver where Jason and I sat together. The way the bus worked was the cool kids sat in the back, and the not so cool kids sat to the front. Jason and I didn't care, though. Him and I would sneak our Nintendo DS's in our backpacks so that we could play Pokemon together after school. Of course, both our parents didn't want their straight A students getting distracted with video games, so we weren't allowed to bring them to school. And let's be real, does that ever stop kids? So, we played our games, made stupid jokes like usual, and eventually, he had to get off for his stop. So, we said our famous goodbye which was, see you later sucka. And playfully stuck our middle fingers at each other. Yeah, we were fucking dumb. At this point, I put my DS away and just began staring out the bus window bored out of my mind as I was subjected to the cool kids loud laughter and dumb comments about after school parties. What always made me bored was that I was always the last stop. My house was just located far enough out. That meant that it was always pretty much an hour long ride. And since Jason got off in the middle of it, that pretty much meant I had another half of the hour to go. So, to get to the point, I watched as every other student got off the bus, and now I was left shyly alone with a bus driver I wasn't familiar with. Normally, this part of the trip was fun for me because my usual bus driver Becky would always ask me how I was and talk to me like a grown up and not just a lame old kid. But now I just felt awkward. I decided to just keep looking out the window and avoid eye contact with him through the rearview mirror when he spoke very nicely again. Hey kid, everything okay with you? I looked up from the seat and shyly said, yeah, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. He gave a chuckle and bellowed, come on. Don't be shy. Come up here. Let's talk. Clearly something is weighing on your mind. What's up? Is it school? Someone's not bullying you, is there? Because if there is. No sir, nothing like that. It's just. I sighed as I grabbed my backpack, dragging it along the floor and walking up to the front seat behind the bus driver. For some reason, he just seemed so nice. And the way he asked about me made me feel like he actually cared rather than my parents. So I caved in and relented in a polite way. It's just that there's this girl that I like. I like her a lot. But I found out today that she has a boyfriend. He frowned and tucked his hat downward again. I'm deeply sorry to hear that kid. I'll tell you this though, I can tell by looking at you that you're a sharp kid. You think that she's better than you and you would give the world to her. The truth is you should value yourself. If she has someone, then that's okay. You'll find someone too. Don't waste time on someone that won't notice you the way you deserve to be. I thought it was odd for him to say the way he said it, but I appreciated what he meant by it. I nodded and thanked him. Believe me kid, when you get to be my age, there will be so many girls for you to get a chance to be with. I laughed at the corny joke and said, yeah, I'll bet. He smiled softly and looked at me through the mirror. What's your name kid? I feel bad calling you kid all the time, he said with a chuckle. No worries. My name is Leon. Good to meet you Leon. My name is Caleb. He reached his hand over to shake mine, and I of course shook it. So, what kept you after school Leon? Don't tell me you're a troublemaker getting detention, he said with joking tone and that hypnotic smile. No sir, nothing like that. I'm in the science club. Oh, science. I used to love astronomy when I was your age. What subject are you studying? Biology mostly. Right now, we are studying different insect exoskeletons. I'll be honest with you Leon. I sucked at science. I flunked every class. I'm sure you know way more than I do. When he said this, I immediately hated him. I still thought he was nice and friendly, don't get me wrong. But I hated having conversations with people where they compliment your intelligence by calling themselves dumb. It seemed forced and pathetic. Like why would anybody ever admit to being stupid like that? To flunk science? To flunk any subject? Let alone a fifth grade level course? Like I said, I hated him. Maybe that's not quite it, but I suppose I just felt tired of the conversation. Luckily, because of that, I realized that when I looked out the window, we were no longer on route to my house. Normally, I wouldn't be freaked out by this because sometimes other bus drivers made mistakes or didn't know where my house was. But since it was winter and with daylight savings about, it got dark very fast. At this point, the sun was already setting, and it was only 4 40 ish So nervously, I interrupted the conversation. Excuse me sir, I think you're going the wrong way to my house. With another nice looking smile, he said, oh gosh, I must have missed the turn blabbing. I'm sorry Leon. Let me make the turn at the end of this light here. Then I realized two more things. 
the first one being that I had no idea where I was. They were houses and street names on the signs. I'm not talking Silent Hill shit or anything. But I mean I didn't recognize the area. Not at all. Like this wasn't anywhere in my town. When you take the bus long enough, you recognize where the local areas are. This wasn't anywhere local. Just where the hell did he take me to, I thought. Mind you that I wasn't allowed to get a phone until I was 14 because my parents didn't want me getting distracted from schoolwork. So, with no way to call my parents, it almost being dusk, and having no fucking idea where I was, I started sweating amongst my arms and face. Just as I was looking around the windows, I noticed the worst thing ever. And to be honest with you, I am so grateful to God that I did. In case you don't know, usually school buses they have the bus driver information. Some school systems handle this differently, but in my school's case, they hire bus drivers and use their own school buses. This means that they work for the school district of the town. In order for the safety of kids and for parents' peace of mind, they have the information of that driver on the front either on the corner windows or beside the mechanism that opens the door. This applies even for new drivers or for substitute drivers too. In this case, it was on the window. And when I looked to read the name, it read Aaron Jackson. I remember to this day trembling with goosebumps. He told me his name was Caleb, and I knew it wasn't a mistake on the ID sticker because above it was Becky's information. So, I knew this was the bus she used. And I knew the information below belonged to Aaron. But this guy was an Aaron. As deeply afraid as I was and cold I felt all over, I tried my best not to freak out screaming and give away that I caught on to what was going on. I didn't know what his true intentions were, and to this day, I still don't, but what I did know was that he wasn't planning on taking me home. So stuttering, I began to lie. Oh, oh shoot. I think I, I lost my phone, I said, pretending to check my pockets, I think I left it in the, um, the other seat. From the rear view mirror, as I glanced back, I didn't see a smile anymore. I saw a stern glance. I suddenly felt the bus turning to the right into a parking position at the side of the road. That's when I booked it. I ran to the back of the bus where the emergency exit was and thank the Lord, I remembered how to use it from what I thought were nonsense fire drills. Hey come back here. Caleb said, no longer with the same politeness in his voice. I lifted the latch of the exit door and jumped from the bus taking off down the road. The problem was that I had no idea where to go. There were no cars and the sun was now beneath the horizon. It was purple black outside, and all I could think was to run into the wooded area where I could hopefully lose him. I could hear him chasing after behind me, screaming creepy things to me. Leon. Leon come back here now. Don't make me tell your parents about this Leon. You're going to be in big trouble mister. If you come back now, I promise I won't hurt you. I'm taking you back home Leon. I swear. I just got a little lost is all. At this point, I stopped running and crawled underneath the fall leaves. Even now, I can feel the scratches upon my arms from slamming into the trees and twigs. I was so fucking scared, and all I could do was try and keep level-headed. All I could do was listen to him creepily promising me things and sounding awfully nice and awfully mean at different times. Leon. I know you think I'm going to hurt you but I'm not. Don't you want to see your family again Leon? Leon. Stop this now. If you don't come to me this instant. You're going to be in big trouble. Don't make me hurt you Leon. When he shouted that, I choked. I was holding my breath at this point, but I coughed up air. I could tell he heard it because I heard his footsteps stop and I heard the leaves crackling in my direction. You think you're so clever, don't you Leon? You really thought you were gonna hide from me? You're being such a bad boy Leon. Now you're going to get your punishment. The leaves kept crumbling and crunching. Louder and louder. Louder. Crackle. Crackle. Snaps of twigs. I just kept holding my breath until underneath me, I felt a twig. It was then that I had an idea. I waited until his footsteps matched my movements so he wouldn't hear me fidgeting. I reached for the branch underneath my foot and threw it over to a broken tree stub I could barely make out in the distance. Somehow and I do believe that it had to be God's doing, I landed the branch to crack loud enough that it broke the other branch and made a thud. Caleb stopped his footsteps and ran over to that sound, no longer screaming my name. I could now see his phone light jumping up and down in the distance after the sound as he tore through leaves. Where are you Leon? Get back here now. I'm going to fuck you up Leon. You have no idea what I have in store for you. I had no choice. In my mind, I no longer could think rationally. I got up and booked it again in the opposite direction. At this point, he realized now I was running and began chasing after me. 
What scared me most now that he was no longer screaming my name or ranting creepy shit. He was just breathing really hard. And I mean really hard. I would occasionally turn back to see his phone light shifting around the darkness. It was so bright at this point that I could catch glimpses of his face getting lit up. That's the thing even now at night I see so vividly. That face that he faked on the bus wasn't there anymore. It was just anger and malice. The kind you see in a spider ready to leap on twitching mosquito. There was just a cold blank stare, as if he knew he was going to get me. I had no choice at this point, but to drop my backpack because it was getting too heavy and making me slow. All I could think was keep running. Keep running. It was then I made it back to the road I was on before, except I found a rundown gas station out in the distance. I just kept running and running, afraid to look behind me when I threw myself inside the station. The cashier, a hard scruff looking college kid, quizzically saw me panting and pressing my face against the glass door when she came around the counter asking me what was wrong. Out of breath and lightheaded, I just ran into the back of the bathroom and cried relentlessly. When I refused to explain the situation to her, she told me she was calling the cops, and within what I think was 15 minutes or so, two cops came and knocked on the door. Son, my name is Charlie and my partner Lauren is here too. We are police officers. We just want to come through the door and talk to you. Can you open the door? In between sobs, I pleaded for them to please keep Caleb away. Obviously, they didn't know who that was, and calmly suggested I open the door for them. Not knowing what else to do at this point, I decided to crack open the door a little bit, making sure Caleb wasn't somehow behind the door. When I saw the two officers and the cashier lady behind the door, I opened it all the way and cried profusely all over again. I can't really remember much of exactly what was said from this point, and all I remember was them asking for my name and my parents picking me up from the gas station. The police from I think happened to get a statement and explain to my parents the events that I sort of was able to convey to them. It turned out that I wasn't all that far from house, but still far enough that I was half an hour out. My parents took me home and were paranoid from everything I could ever do at this point. No more after school. No more friend visits to Jason's house. And no more bus trips. They drove me to school from there on. Of course, I didn't go to school immediately after. I stayed at home for a few weeks and explained to Jason what happened over AIM, remember that using that stupid thing? Anyhow, I basically spent all my time inside afraid to go out for those few weeks and I had nightmares, insomnia, and the shit that comes with PTSD. I had counselors, routine checkups from doctors, and the police came back every so often to ask me for more details to what happened. Unfortunately, to make a long sob story short, the case went cold. They couldn't find Caleb or any evidence to suggest he had any prior connection to the school, nor did they find any fingerprints on the bus or DNA evidence to suggest he was there, to begin with. They canvassed the area of the woods where I was for weeks, but that's all I know from what they told me. I don't know all the details concerning the investigation. I spent the following years doing my best to recover from this. For a while, by the time I made it to high school, you could say I was finally able to function normally, or as normally as anyone can. I didn't have any more nightmares or panic-induced episodes. I could even talk openly about what happened without freaking out. But now that I've been looking at the school buses for my niece, this has all come back to haunt me. So, before I go and I suppose lose more time for sleeping, I will say that something that still concerns me about what happened. I don't know if he chose to do what he was planning to do to me on purpose or if it was just because I was the unlucky last kid to get off the bus. But I told you I dropped my backpack in that wooded area and to this day, as far as I know, the police and investigators haven't found it. Which leaves me to believe that the creep took it. Now thankfully it didn't have my address or anything like that in it, but it did have my name on it. My full name. I can't help but wonder if he gave up on trying to get me, or if he will one day come back to get me. 